Featuring Galaxy AI, it has opened up a whole new world of smartphone photography. But with the advanced AI integration and enhanced nightography, you can perfect your photos after you've taken them with the awesome power of Galaxy AI. Remove people like removing shadows and reflections. Hand over control to AI and let it suggest some automatic edits. Added AI power, the five times with a super HDR upgrade, all your content will just look like the scene you were capturing. And you'll be creating your best work in no time. Okay, so I just watched that so you don't have to. And I've come to terms with smartphones and computational photography being the future of photography as we know it. You know, we're sharing pictures constantly and we're liking them and we're just, it's all good. I'm okay with that. But it gets interesting when your pictures are now so manipulated without any filters being applied that like, the work that the user needs to do to take an amazing picture has kind of become obsolete, or has it? I recently bought a consumer grade, professional grade camera, and the one thing that just, it was an eye opener is after I saw all this like AI and like incorporation, I, and we've, be, we've seen it, you know, like with auto enhance, and what else is AI doing? Denoiser, auto white balance. It's just so easy to capture an amazing moment. But then, hmm, it's not necessarily robbed, but you just don't get to experience it when you're not carrying a physical camera that you know has no computational photography and everything that you see the camera can portray if you have the right equipment. So in this video, you'll see that I used a uh, Samsung S23 Ultra as my, my modern smartphone and a Fujifilm X-T4 with the kit lens, the 18-55 to for the consumer professional grade camera. There's pros and cons, you know. I, I don't think I'm ever gonna not carry around my phone and not take a picture because there's AI involved, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna be extra mindful of the times where I can bring a camera and experience the joys of adjusting the aperture and the ISO to get a picture that I like. And then, again, there's the whole editing after the fact. So, let's get into it. Look at him. He has no idea. This is gonna be exciting. If you noticed, my finger was in that shot, and with a camera, it's just it's so hard to have your finger in a shot when you have a lens sticking out. You, your hands go to certain places, but that is user error. I should have just been like, but I didn't. Oops. And the unfortunate thing is, although phones do have the capability of slow-mo and they do have the capability of 8K, they also sometimes don't shoot in the highest bit rate, so the actual video when exported and shared on social media is it's like blurry. It's gross, even though it's 8K. Or if you're moving around so much, the rolling shutter is crazy. Lens flares can be a big deal. So that there's there's definitely gives and takes to when you're carrying around a phone for slow-mo versus a camera for slow-mo. Okay, well, well, it's just so much easier to capture candid moments with a phone because it's in your pocket all the time. And then as far as vlogging goes, I think it's just way better to carry around a smartphone because this is very uh, eye-opening. You know, it's very obvious, you, like it's very obvious that you're carrying around a camera. Even though the quality might look better, I just think after like stabilization comes into play and just comfortability, ease of use of using everything. Like it's much easier to catch a dynamic, organic scene with your smartphone. You know, it's allowed in more places. And that's all I can think of. And like, see now we're going smartphone and it's just so much easier to whip it out, point it at yourself, 
and start filming. Like even now, I'm already more comfortable just doing this. Get uh, like stuff on the side. Guys, thank you so so much. Have a good one. Thanks. Also, you can get a wider view and more stable. The only thing is you can't see yourself. But I think to make a better video, you shouldn't even be able to see yourself because then you're constantly doing this. Or wear glasses. So I've noticed that in this landscape, a lot of people are looking to buy a camera for vlogging. They want to capture the everyday moments in a nice cinematic way. Just with my one day of going out and about, I found some pros and cons to carrying a camera versus just using your phone. I chose the dog park because both both the phone and the camera is not too intimidating for everyone, you know, and uh, it just seemed like a nice place to capture everything I needed for this video. back and looking at some of this footage I've noticed that there are some downfalls when using a camera even for run and gun shooting I've like noticed and this all does come down to equipment which is a drawback your phone is able usually now I'm um, now into the future the phone is able to essentially do all this stuff on the fly auto exposure white balance notice with the camera is when I zoomed in you just saw it, my lighting completely changed and I couldn't do anything about I can click around and adjust that after the fact but because you zoom in your shutter speed when you zoom in your aperture changes and there's nothing I can do about that that just comes down to your equipment and that changes your light but lighting is everything you know it creates depth it creates the shadows and it's it really does all come down to your lighting for that cinematic look but that's the thing I've noticed with using a professional grade camera. It's sometimes just more comfortable to shoot photos with, whether that being just out and about street wise or even at events. But then that's also the thing when it's ready to share, using a smartphone is just so much faster. You take the picture and then you edit it if you want to, or even just through whatever social media app you're using, you can just slap a filter on it, boom, you're ready to go. We're on a camera, you got to either set up a nice transfer app, you know, and that all depends if it wants to play nicely, or, or you have to take out the SD card, transfer it to the computer, go through all the good pictures essentially, and then send that either to a cloud storage or back to your phone. Pain in the ass. But worth it. A dog that's at release rescue that's like Oh yeah. I described it. <laughs> but when Nolan was there there was another dog. I first I thought it was like a dog. I don't see that color that often. The red? The rest, that darker red. Mmm. So now I thought we would compare and contrast some photos taken with the phone and the camera. Yeah, you guys be the audience. You tell me if it's even worth the money. A, a camera, this one would cost around, with the, with the lens, $1,200, $1,300, where your phone, you can get an iPhone 13 Pro, I think, right now for $1,000, and it's more than a camera. So... You guys be the judge. Feel free to let me know which one was your favorite photo. If it came from a smartphone, if it came from the camera, let me know. I want to know what your thoughts are. I do see that color profiles are changing throughout each picture.
Okay, so now we're gonna go into low light. It's gonna be, I think we started at 9.30 p.m. It was very dark out. And we're gonna talk about that part of camera versus smartphone. I'm presented with my first problem. I have nowhere to place the camera. It's hard to find placement because you don't want your expensive equipment to fall. So let's see what we can do. A lavalier mic would work perfectly over here, but I don't have that, so you can't hear anything I'm saying right now. And the closer I look, it looks like you're looking at my crotch, and who wants to do that? I don't know how natural this looks. I feel like you're getting a lot of my midsection and not a lot of over here. So perhaps this is doable, but I have one more trick up my sleeve to make this whole thing more cinematic, more enjoyable for both smartphones and cameras. Lighting. You take time whether or not you're using a phone or not, because you have to check your reference footage to see if the lighting is working well. See, now what I imagine is this is casting the harshest shadow. We can even try this, taking off the glasses, and it's probably casting a crazy shadow right over here. So that's not really ideal. Now we can try, I don't know, you have to get creative with it. I bet this looks, this probably looks the best. It feels the most comfortable. But, and again, I don't want to be holding up a light, and you're going to have to set up. So. Whether you're carrying a camera or a smartphone, you gotta still set up and take time for the perfect shot. And now this is probably where I think the biggest downfall of carrying around a camera for vloggers would be. It's as soon as it gets dark, as soon as you lose your light and you're ready to tell a story. Look at this, I'm completely not washed out, the opposite of washed out. And the only way I can do that is to fix things on the fly and I can boost my ISO but now we don't know how noisy it is so we're gonna go down to a nice less noisy ISO let's keep it at we're moving down to 1600 1600 is low let's flip on this bad boy that's that's good lighting and then see what we can do okay so I changed a few settings. We're at ISO 2000. I had to put the light up. I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the phone. Because we have a huge harsh light right there, everything is kind of blown out. But if I can lock it off, you can see that's what we got going on. Now if I don't move too much, I think we have a proper side-by-side -side going camera, phone, and we'll see. Because as of right now, I really do believe nighttime videography, phones. I was wrong. I looked red. If that happens right now. Went into manual mode, tweaked the aperture, tweaked the white balance. It looks better. So now we're pretty much looking for, I don't know, just all around enjoyability, maybe frame rate, maybe natural looks. The phone might be doing a lot of like digital processing because it's nighttime or because we're so close with the light bouncing off. It's a loud plane. We created something and now we're gonna take some nighttime shots. I think I'm gonna do all of this in auto because mostly people are gonna be capturing it on auto at night. Phones are good for that. I'm also gonna keep this rolling so we have some nice B-roll. earlier that I had a light so let's bring a light into it see if we can get a nicer shot see what we can do with that and I also have my camera strap on me so we're gonna throw that into the hodgepodge and see if it can look artsy I think we should uh, let's not be too delicate with it let's throw that let's throw that we just 
have a sip in the pine cone. Now it's like a baby. I like it. Fucked it up. That'll be interesting. So for this, because we're going handheld, we're not placing the camera down, I don't think I need to place the light down. Now I can kind of just point it to wherever I like the most. Actually, no picture here. There's no composition. That's another important thing is like, composition, guys. If there's no picture, don't take it. I mean, I think you should. Okay. Cool. So, final thoughts. I think it all comes down to where you're gonna be at the end of the day. If you find yourself, what's another word for no? If you plan on going out to a theme park, maybe carrying around a camera might not be the safest way to capture that moment. But if you find yourself on Venice Beach, but like not near the sand, I would never take my camera near the sand. Just, it's just how I am, but yeah. That's an amazing place. So yeah, know your equipment, know where you're gonna go, and you're gonna get some amazing photos. But it's cool to see, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not afraid of the AI photography in smartphones. I actually am excited for it. I think it's the faster we get to just clicking and then everything looks. If the standard is an amazing photo and that's something I just wanna capture, I'm okay with it. But then when I wanna like go out and about and get into the nitty gritty of it i just there's a market for it i don't think cameras are going anywhere you know it's just but yeah it's cool the future's nice